listeners need to realize that their donors have 93% of their wealth in assets. Only 7% of what's available to give away is in cash. So it would behoove us all to help them and help us figure out how to leverage that 93% for our organizations and not just the 7%. Welcome everyone to this broadcast of Jim and Java on the Development Effectiveness Strategies channel. Today, we're bringing back in to interview one of our favorite guests, Eric Fleshhood. Eric is the CEO of the Crew Foundation, $50 million in assets. And Eric is going to bring to us today a special message directed towards asset giving at year end. Now, many of us have to deal with and understand the difference between asset giving and cash giving. Well, Eric's going to unpack some of those and other areas and what we can do at year end to help improve and increase our income and see our organization be fully funded. So I am looking forward to our time with Eric. So Eric, take it away. Well, Jim, thanks so much for having me on. I just love these times together, and you're just delivering such great information to your viewers. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe, as they say in the, uh, the video world. Um, I, I live in Orlando, Florida, where I'm the CEO for Crew Foundation. Uh, Crew Foundation has been around for 40 years, and we've helped uh, people uh, direct over $1.5 billion of uh, charitable giving over the last uh, 40 years. And so it's our our day to day is about helping people see the benefits of giving more than just cash, of bringing to, to the table some uh, tax benefit treats that are in the charitable tax code that they don't know about because it increases their ability to give. That's what we love to do. Well, Eric, as we start here, unpack a little bit the concept of asset giving and how we differentiate between asset giving and cash giving. As we pointed out in a couple of previous episodes, first of all, you got your your listeners need to realize that their donors have ninety three percent of their wealth in assets. Only seven percent of what's available to give away is in cash. So it would behoove us all to help them and help us figure out how to leverage that ninety three percent for our organizations and not just the seven percent. Um, and essentially what we're talking about with asset giving is the stuff that people own. It could be real estate. It could be their stock portfolio. It could be their business. It could be a life insurance policy. The things that they own that have value, more than likely, there's a way to give it to your organization. And what that does, Jim, is it, um, it preserves the whole value of what's being given for the use of your organization and protects us, uh, protects them from any of it having to go to Uncle Sam, thereby reducing what they can give to your organization. Now, Eric, why is it for our audience that's just kind of tuning in and they're trying to understand asset giving? Why, why is asset giving so important versus just a cash gift? Um, but it's also where our uh, constituents can get a double tax savings versus just giving cash. When you give cash, you get to write, you get the benefit of writing that off against your income taxes. Great benefit. Love it that we live in a country where that can happen. But did you know that when you give an asset that has appreciated in value, you give that to your organization, not only does the donor get to write it off on their income taxes, but they get a second tax savings, which is on capital gains. They avoid paying capital gains on, part, on, on the part of the asset that they are gifting to your organization. That means driving down the cost of giving a dollar to your organization down to as much as 50 cents on the dollar. 
Boy. Well, Eric, you've uh, in previous episodes, you have talked about the importance of plan giving, estate design, and I've created a playlist that I'm going to include right up here. So once you uh, get done watching this, click onto that and people can watch. So you've sold me on the importance of asset giving. Now, let's get to the heart of this. What are some of the unique and creative strategies between now and year end that our audience can employ with their donors? Yeah, first and most basic thing I think you can do is to let your constituents know that you're open for business, that you do, in fact, take stock as gifts, that you would, in fact, take a piece of real estate as a gift or a part of their business. Merely letting them know that you have the capability of doing that, one or more of those is a game changer because the default assumption in the mind of all our constituents is you only take cash. So that would be the first thing that I would do would, would be to get the word out that you even are open for business. Um, the other thing that I would consider doing, Jim, is communicating the deadlines that are coming up on us here real quick. We all know the importance of the deadline of December 31st. There's that hard tax deadline that creates the sense of urgency. I've got to get something done now or the tax treatment is going to be locked in forever and I'll never be able to change it. Um, but also, in addition to that hard tax deadline, let people know what your deadlines are as an organization for being able to accept and process these types of gifts before December 31st because you are gonna need some lead time. Um, uh, real estate, like at Crew Foundation, we tell people, hey, if you're thinking about giving a gift of real estate, we need to get that going by November 30th. Uh, if you're thinking about giving a gift of a mutual fund, we need you, you need to get moving on that by December 7th. Uh, there, there are some deadlines that you can communicate appropriate to your organization that will help people get in motion and make the whole process a lot easier. Uh, it's real easy to procrastinate on these things, Jim, and these deadlines help spur people into action. Well, Eric, I wanna I kind of piggyback on another subject that had some urgency that you brought on an earlier episode. And I'm gonna also point that out, uh, but it's the CARES Act. And you did a great video that I'll link above on the CARES Act that will take effect. It's a one-time opportunity for our donors that will end December 31st of this year. Uh, for those who haven't yet watched the video, um, explain how these two things kind of merge together. This asset giving that you're talking about and the CARES Act, how do those merge together? I could see that as, as kind of being a, you, you mentioned in the other video, a perfect storm. How do these things merge together for this year end? Yes, Jim, that's actually a quite complicated and a technical question, but let me try to boil it down to its most simple form. The CARES Act creates the opportunity for people to give away 100% of their income in 2021 tax-free to your organization. It is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that's been created by the government to help your organization get through the COVID pandemic, but it expires on December 31st. As a part of giving away 100% of your income tax-free, there is a role for asset giving to be a part of that 100% that mix because giving away assets counts as a deduction against your taxable income for this year. So there, that's the intersection between assets and the CARES Act. I'm a nonprofit leader watching this video, and you have you have thrown out a lot of things that are probably much more complicated than I'm used to doing. Do you recommend seeking the advice of financial advisors, some with someone within your organization who is an expert in these areas that could provide counsel to not only you, but also to your donors? Um, I don't want your your viewers to uh, to be afraid of this area. Like Crew Foundation, your organization can grow with time in your sophistication and understanding of these things. You can start simple. You can start with a basic gift of stock. Stock is 
easy to give for the donor. It's easy to handle for your organization. And you don't need a lot of, you don't need attorneys. You don't need a lot of technical experts to be able to handle gifts of stock. When you move into, from there, you could move into other assets. You could move into uh, 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 precious metals. Again, dealing with precious metals, a little bit more difficult than stock, but not wildly different than stock. And so that's a that's a growth step. Eventually, your organization will grow to where it can take real estate, it can take business interests, and as you grow, you'll see the uh, outside experts that you may need to tap into to help you set that up and have good governance over the process. But don't be intimidated. You don't have to bite off the whole enchilada all at once. You can start with the most basic gift of assets, and that is stock. Mm. Well, I to kind of put into practice, I, I I think about that open for business sign that you talked about, moving it from closed to open. Uh, so you're saying essentially, don't be afraid to venture in. You don't have to be an expert in this area. You can still be open for business and not have to know everything possible, right? That's right. That's right, Jim. And, and let me just tell you how simple it is, because it is an action point that your viewers could take if they want to position themselves uh, between now and the end of the year to start capturing their share of asset giving. Uh, the basic requirement for your organization to be able to receive a gift of stock is to open up a brokerage account in the name of your organization. It's as simple as that. Opening a brokerage account is only mildly more involved than opening a checking account for your organization. Just like you need a place to put your cash that comes in, and most for most organizations, it's a checking account of some kind, you need a brokerage account to receive and put any stock that might be given to your organization. And once it's in there, it, you can liquidate it, and then you can use it to support your mission. Wow. Well, Eric, more great stuff. I appreciate that so much. Um, as we start to wrap up this broadcast, do you have any final comments, final thoughts that you'd like to leave with our listeners? You, uh, you do always give us such great wisdom, wise counsel, and wise advice. There are two things that come to mind that I think your viewers could start to do right away to capture the wind that's blowing here at the, at the end of the year. The first thing I'd suggest is better position yourself for gifts of stock by enabling your constituents to take action 24 seven. Don't make it dependent on whether somebody's there to answer the phone uh, during business hours. What that means, Jim, is putting a simple explainer sheet that, that it, on your website, a web page that tells them exactly the simple steps to take to make that gift of stock to your organization. So it's there 24 seven. And I would consider if you already have something like that, but it's hidden under the other ways to give portion of your website, could really give strong consideration to pulling it out from that more hidden part of your website and temporarily elevating it to more of a main, uh, the main page of your, your give, giving page so that people know how to take action. The second thing I'll say, Jim, is start planning now how to begin messaging on this in January. You want to your, you want to give your donors plenty of runway to get used to the idea and picture in their mind what it would look like to give away that vacation home that they don't use anymore, or to give away part of their business because of the effectiveness in their giving, and, and it'll actually help their business too. Don't wait till the fourth quarter next year to try to begin both educating them on how this works and getting them to pull the trigger educate them throughout the year so that when you come to fourth quarter, there's nothing left to do but take action when these tax deadlines are upon us. Wise advice, Eric. I appreciate it. We'll look forward to having you back on the show, Eric. I know we addressed one topic that we know we could have for a future broadcast, and uh, this is just great advice. So once again, thanks again, Eric, for joining us. My pleasure, Jim. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that message from Eric Fleshhood on asset giving. It was truly eye-opening, especially as we move into year-end and try and take advantage of the CARES Act that we introduced uh, in another video. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do so and click the bell and be notified of future videos. If you need to reach me for any reason, uh, please reach out to me on my email at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com 
Also, you can reach me with questions at on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. Also, I'm out on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. So on behalf of Development Effectiveness Strategies Channel, we're always here to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. See you next time. <music>